Let's now pick up the topic of um, simple linear regression. Now, very commonly, once we look at a scatter plot and look and see a linear trend and start thinking in terms of correlation, we want to move on and, and actually use it for more than just a measurement of the strength of the association. We quite often want to use um, the relationship between the two variables for predictive purposes. So let's take a look once again at the Finger um, Lakes data. And what we want to do is we want to determine how appropriate uh, a linear model would be. And we want to use this model to estimate the number of dead fish giving a pollution index of 10.0. And we want to consider what happens at a pollution index of 13.75. And that's really the strength of uh, linear regression is typically used to predict uh, one variable based on values of the other. We also want to um, talk a little bit about the interpretation of the value R squared. When you did correlation, you saw the value of R, but right above it, you saw R squared. What does that um, value actually mean? It's referred to as a coefficient of determination, but what does it actually mean in terms of the model? And we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, just to refresh your memory on the Finger Lakes um, data, it's um, data that was obtained from the lakes, called Finger Lakes in New York, and between the years 1987 and 1994, they recorded both the pollution index and the number of dead fish that they observed. Now, can we produce a reliable or usable model uh, to use for predictive purposes? Can we use this data for linear regression? Well, the first thing we'll do is what we already did in terms of correlation. We'd, we'll take a look at it and create a scatter plot. And this is what the scatter plot looks like. Now, in general, when I look at this scatter plot, what I'm seeing is pretty much a linear trend here. Um, in general, a line looks like it would fit this data quite well. And that's suggesting that maybe linear regression is the right thing to do, at least to start doing. When we look at the assumptions, and we will address all the assumptions needed for regression, when we do that, we may decide whether at that point um, it was or was not a proper thing to do. Okay, so if we decide that a linear trend appears to exist, then we want to go ahead and continue with the model building process. And in terms of the calculator used, the model building process is the exact same thing that we did for correlation. It's the exact same command, but this time we will be looking um, for a little bit different information. Now, I'm going to start off with a hypothesis test, because when we looked at the scatter plot, what we saw was a linear trend, and that's what you expected. As soon as I started talking about pollution index, and the deaths of fish, what you would expect to happen as, is as the pollution index increases, you'd expect to see the number of dead fish to also increase. So you expect to see some type of positive linear trend. Now, in terms of regression, um, the model that we already looked at um, suggests that we're going to end up with something that looks like, see, y hat equals b0 plus b1 x1. I'm sorry b1, I'm just going to leave that as an x for right now. Um, the parameter values for the population is beta naught plus beta 1 x. And beta 1 is the slope of the regression line. And this b1 is the slope of the sample regression line. So I started talking about a hypothesis test, but I'm really going to be interested in primarily is whether or not a linear, positive linear trend is real. So my null hypothesis would be that beta 1, the slope, equals 0. That means there's no association, or it's horizontal. It's not positive. Um, the alternative hypothesis will be that beta 1 is greater than zero. That would coincide with a positive linear trend. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this hypothesis test is actually equivalent to what we did with correlation. This is the exact same thing as rho equals zero versus the alternative rho is greater than zero. Um, when I do this in the calculator in just a moment, you'll see that the calculator says beta and rho. It actually tests both at the same time because one is actually a function of the other. So let's jump to the calculator now and see what we get. Let's go to stat, move over to test, 
and go to Linreg T test. That's the same thing we did for correlation. My X data is in L1. Now it's really important that you line up the data properly. I'm going to use pollution to estimate dead fish, so pollution needs to be on the X axis. That's the independent variable. The number of dead fish we're going to think of as the dependent variable. And right here is what I was talking about earlier. Here's the beta for our hypothesis statement that we just did. Here's rho. Testing these are equivalent. And what I'm looking for is greater than zero. I will put the regression equation y in y1. And I'm going to show you how to do that real quickly. I just cleared it out. We go to vars. Move over to y vars. Select option 1, which is function. And then y1 is the first selection. So it put it in y1. What it's going to do, it's going to calculate the regression line and store the results in y1 for you. So if you do a scatter plot again, you hit graph, your scatter plot will show up, and the regression line will also show up. So I'm going to select calculate. And here we go. Here's our information. The value, the p-value is the same as you saw before as 4.37 um, e negative 4. So just to go back to address this, I'll say p-value equals 4.37 e negative 4, which is approximately 0 0.0004. Uh, therefore, we would obviously reject the null hypothesis and conclude that um, there is statistical evidence to suggest that what we're seeing as a positive slope is actually real and it's not by chance. The probability of it being simply by chance um, is very, very small, almost zero. Okay, what else do we have here? When we look at the calculator, we have values for A and B. Well, I need to go back up, well, actually right here. You can see it's using the equation Y equals A plus BX. So A is what we think of as B0, and B is what we think of as B1. So A, the y-intercept is 111.6554, and the slope is 9.4926. This is for the sample regression line. So what that means is we actually have a model that looks like this. Y equals a y hat to predicted value equals 111.6554 plus 9.4926x. In terms of our actual problem, what we're predicting is dead fish. So I should really say dead fish hat. Remember that hat says it's the predicted value. Equals a 111.6554. This is what we're thinking of as the y-intercept. Right, that's b0 plus 9.4926, that's the slope, which we're thinking of as B1, times X, well X in this case is actually the value in the pollution index. So the way I would use this is if I put in a value for the pollution index into here, then that would just simply do the arithmetic, that would give me my estimated value for the dead fish.